Hello everybody, welcome to Trifles and Tribulations, a podcast where we talk about things that are annoying, irritating, aggravating, you know, any of those times where you've like, you've stubbed your toe against a table and you like, you want to kick it back, but then you know that that's just going to hurt you more than the table, and so you think about like flipping the table and you realize that that's a mess that you're going to have to clean up, so you just like take that annoyance and internalize it. And now we're going to take that annoyance and externalize it. We're going to get all that nasty, weird, annoying stuff that nobody talks about, but everybody knows and understands and just sort of get all that nonsense out. Or at least talk about it in private. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing I want to like basically go over is that there's a lot of stuff that most people think like, oh, I'm the only one that feels that way about something or whatnot. Oh, yeah. But like everyone understands. Like the biggest one is obviously stuff like uh, pineapple on pizza and like milk before cereal or whatever. Um, and I've got like a whole list of things here that we can go through at some point. But uh, to, to kind of start off with, uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, both uh, – express and maybe ask you is is there anything that specifically like upsets you or it sets you off and i'll go first because this is the whole reason why i wanted to make this podcast because i i'm not a very vocal person i'm very quiet i don't express stuff to people i don't talk to my family a whole lot or whatnot and generally i just let stuff you know not get to me but there is one thing that I absolutely cannot stand, and that is hoses and electrical cords. And specifically when you have it like plugged in at one end and you figure out which which part of the, the thing is coiled up. So you, you lay it down properly so that as you pull it, it'll like mm-hmm. unspool and then it just gets bunched up or it gets knotted for no reason and you have to go back and fix it. That sets me up it's just completely over the edge that like if that starts to if any part of that process where it should just work but it doesn't that for a lot of things but when something like that happens i just absolutely flip my lid and i just like i start shaking the cord or the hose or just like flipping it around i just like i i go into child mode and just start throwing a fit that upsets me a little bit (laughs) yeah do you, do you ever yeah. have uh, that oh. experience with cords or something? Oh, I, I, I work in the service industry uh, installing $100,000 uh, industrial machinery. I go through that type of bullshit all the fucking time. Oh, okay. Oh, especially with... So So the big, thing, the big thing where I have to deal with that all the fucking time is with extension cords. Mm-hmm. So if I have to pull out an extension cord to... Uh, I would say plug in my work laptop somewhere like 50 feet away because for whatever reason, people decided that they don't need a plug next to a $100,000 machine. <laughs> okay, sure. So I have to run the extension cord all the way there, plug in my laptop, and then when I'm done and everything, I'm trying to bundle it all up, and it's just like all twist and turn. It's like, what the fuck happened? I literally just laid it out. How did it get twisted like this? So, it- yeah, no, I've... Oh, I, do I, I wasn't sure if it was just me because what I, I do construction and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I do like maintenance and whatnot. I do cleaning and whatnot uh, and also building deconstruction and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I use cords and hoses um, mm-hmm. and also just sort of around the house since we sort of live outside the city. We've got a big yard and whatnot. We've got oh, hoses run man. and electrical cords run through tents and whatnot. But you would hate this one job I have to do every once in a while. Well, so, the the one thing that you can try to do is either, like, take the whole thing with you and try to unspool it as you go by either, like, dropping a loop, but then it's still mm-hmm. twisted. So yeah. you can, like, try to roll it across the ground, but then that also introduces its own problems because, especially with, like, a hose where you've got the end, it keeps mm-hmm. slapping against the ground. And... <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Here's something that's just going to make you (coughs) one of the things I have to install from time to time. And it's not often I do these, but I have to install something called a gantry. And I don't know if this is the actual like 
terminology for it or if it's just what we call it i don't know but it's basically this big gigantic um basically it just picks up and puts down uh wooden boards but it does oh, it with this big yeah. gigantic I, it's I, got like its own scissor about. yeah it's got like its own scissor lift for its arm and it goes down suctions the board lifts it up <clears> moves <throat> it around now the way it moves it around is that it's on a rail so it can go left and right Right. And then that rail is attached to a rail that goes forward and back. For for so people got... that are listening at home, basically mm-hmm. it's like one of those big cranes that most people would probably see mm-hmm. over like a train or whatever. Yeah. That like lifts it up off the train and then like slides like a crane game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then it's also on wheels so the whole thing can move too. Exactly. A, a crane game is actually the perfect way to describe it because a crane game is always one rail on two rails. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so this big whole gantry is is two lot two rails and one rail. Now here's the thing. Mm-hmm. When this thing gets shipped, all of the connectors and tubing and wiring and everything that mm. has to go from the middle down to the other t- to the uh to the long end and then all the way down and back again curling around on itself so that it can extend and retract. That gigantic set of, of, of uh, cables and everything, there's usually about 20 to 30 of them. And these things are about like a football field length. Or no, maybe oh not a football goodness. field. I, that'd, be three, that'd be 300 feet. I'd probably say they're about 150 feet. So half a football field. They're long. Um, anyway, you've got this half a football field long, uh, long uh, wiring. And basically, the problem with this wiring, yes, kind kind of like that, but not not quite. It, it, this the, one's more fancy. <laughs> yeah, the, this is like the very simplified version, but like yes. human sized is all I was trying yep. to say. So here's the thing: these thirty cables, different sizes, different lengths, and remember, some of these are fiber optics. So you have to be careful with them. Oh. They're all wrapped up individually. <clears throat> And then thrown in a box Mm -hmm. all together. Mm. So you've got 30 cables all individually wrapped up, but all in one big gigantic box. Some of them are not individually wrapped. So they're just kind of coiled, not zip tied and just tossed in there. And, and the problem, the problem is when you have to fucking unwrap these and they always get twisted up and you have to unwrap them one by one individually all the way down the length of the factory that you're working in. <clears throat> yeah. And then once you've lined all of them down, then you have to pick them up one by one and load them up the side of one of these support rails up to the main rail, all the way to the uh, to the central rail where the actual boom lift is, and you have to hook it up. And you yeah. got to do this one by one by one. And... Let me also add up, add that they all have to be fed into what's called an energy chain. Oh. <laughs> and if you want to know what an energy chain is, imagine that you have a sandwich. And the sandwich, <laughs> the sandwich has sides as well. So there's no way to get into the sandwich unless you get in straight through the middle. And you have to put... 30 individual carrots into this sandwich and this sandwich is 150 feet long takes a very long time to do this and these cords love to get tangled and this is a two day process in a two week long install so yes Uh, I've got an image for an energy chain I know exactly what you mean dude Yep, that's an energy chain. That is exactly the energy chain, and that is exactly the type of cables. Yeah. So imagine that, but 30 of them. And and the annoying thing is that they've all got, like, different heads and whatnot. Yep. And they're, like, different thicknesses, so they don't yep. all want to play well together in that thing. No. But and yeah. most of them are fiber optics. You have to be very gentle. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you have to make sure they're long enough. Because if you didn't if you didn't feed it in the right the right distance so that it could actually make it to the machine, then you gotta slowly push all the way down <laughs> that energy chain. Oh man. It I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the fact that I have to just play with a bunch of wires for two full days on a week. 
but it's such a hassle to yeah. do this thing. That's oh. one of those things that it's it's annoying. It's like the extra work of having to do it, but yeah. it, it at the same time, because you know that it's extra work that you have to do, uh, I don't think it hits quite as hard as like when you're, you know, like, let, let's say that you could just pull it out of the box. Like, you didn't have to, like, individually go and pull out the individual spools. Like, mm -hmm. it, if you could pull it out of the box, that's the way it's supposed to work. And then yep. you pull on it, and then it gets stuck. That's what I'm talking about. When stuff doesn't work when it should, that's what oh, really yeah. gets me. Yeah. So, like, I I get it, because I, I, I don't really work with... Uh, those kinds of special cords and whatnot. But we were like pressure yeah. washing the roof so we could fix it or whatnot because mm -hmm. we needed it to be clean in order to do that. Um, but those cords are very, they're sturdy, but they also yeah. won't just, you know, they won't go. If you get them twisted, they're just absolutely stiff and stuck. And you can actually bend them. Like if you get them too tight, you can crimp them. Like yeah. pressure washing hoses, you absolutely cannot you know do the thing where you just like pinch off the end and like crimp it because once you yeah. do that that hose is just ruined mm -hmm. yep yeah <coughs> but uh there there was something else i was gonna say about the uh the freaking rail system that you yeah because because i had a question about how the actual process of it is that you when you work that because i i've oh, it's, worked with it's a long uh, fun process uh, i've done backstage work for like uh plays and whatnot so there's a whole bunch of like other world of wiring when it comes to sound systems mm -hmm. and like doing stage work and whatnot for uh speakers and microphones and all that nonsense um mm -hmm. but usually they have uh you, you, you put it behind something like for like a play or whatever they've got like backdrops or whatnot uh, and typically yep. stages have like little trap doors along the edge that you run the cords through and then you can just sort of pop it up through a hole what's the actual like box system that you're you're putting this because uh, I'm, I'm assuming the box moves with the gantry when it uh, is maneuvering oh. so it Here's here's actually a, a perfect picture of a of what it looks like. Oh, I'm you've got a picture. You, yeah, I got a I got a good picture of a different company's uh, gantry. I'm okay. gonna send you this one. Yeah, because I'm kind of interested. You also so, said that you're you using this to move wood with like a suction cup. Oh, so you're using it to move wooden panels. Panels. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was thinking lumber. <laughs> yep, lumber. That's basically what you're. Well, it's it's lumber you're working with. So let's go to downloads. Here it is. So here's the gantry if you want to put that up on the screen. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yep. So th this isn't ours. This is yeah, a different competitor. But, but yeah, this was much different than what I was thinking, yep. though. So if you think about it, it's relatively the same kind of system. Basic, what you have is you have these wooden panels that are ready to be worked on. Usually they're going to be moved to a CNC, which is going to cut them into different individual panels. And so what you have is you see that I-beam in the far back, and then you see the middle I-beam that's in between the two. Mm -hmm. So this thing is moving back and forth on the middle I-beam and on the two leg I-beams. Yeah, and then it's like a big 3D out. printer type setup, you know. Kind of, the, very much. And you'll notice all those motors in the top. Basically, some of those motors will be vacuum suction. And mm. so what happens is it goes down, it pushes onto the board, and then activates the suction, which basically lifts up the board. And then once it lifts up the board, it moves it to the... Uh, it'll usually move it to a CNC or, like you see in that background, a little uh, conveyor belt. It'll right. bring it to the conveyor belt, lower it down, and then let go of the suctions. And then it goes up, goes back in, grabs another board. And usually these boards are separated, like you see right there, by types or materials. So the machine knows at any given time that a certain spatial area within this fence, there are basically plots of land. And each plot of land has a different type of board on it. And the so boards don't need to be advance. perfectly stacked? No, it ju they just need to be within a certain amount of, amount of, uh, certain amount of distance. Because what happens is 
you you basically have an infeed where you have a section of the fence where a forklift can bring in boards and drop it down right and then you have a light barrier that turns off the machine when you're bringing the forklift in dropping the boards and when you leave the light barrier is brought back in and then the machine kicks in so safety and gotcha. then what happens is the gantry will come over it'll pick up the it'll pick up the boards usually there will be a little uh a little um scanner on the on the board so that as it picks it up it can read it and it knows what this th material is and then oh, brings it gotcha. to the location it's got like a and, barcode it's not like using smart usually. software to look at it so you could technically tell the gantry hey i'm bringing in this type of material and then it says great i'm going to wait for the light barrier to stop being being uh, used right. and then as soon as light barrier is good it comes over picks up the boards and it brings it specifically to the spot that where the material that you told it goes mm. or it uses a scanner and it scans it and a smart drops it to the place that it has stored aside for that specific material so it it's got like a sticker on spend. each board right yeah okay. it, it depends on how much money you want to spend because right. the sticker system is great if you got a lot of boards because the cnc also needs to read that sticker so it knows what material it is so it can load the correct software and then that software determines what type of cuts it's making and what size cuts and then those those uh, label new labels will be placed on the board on each part of the board as the CNC cuts it with its own labeler. And then those labels are read by the next machine, which is the edge bander, which gives it a banding. The drill tech, which drills holes in it for uh, right. for like a um, what do you call how it it's up? made IKEA furniture? Yeah, exactly. It, it yep. just depends on like how many different types of things that you're working with and what you yeah. want to do. Because you you like if you have like four quadrants, you could be or like, I'm gonna put the you know triangle pieces in this quadrant, and then it's yep. like, okay, I know that's where the triangle pieces are basically. Exactly. Yep. Even if this triangle has like four corners, it's like, uh, that's a triangle yep. piece, and puts it with the rest of them. And you can get as uh, simple as you want or as fancy as you want. <coughs> if you just want the gantry to hold your boards, and when you go to your CNC and you say, I'm going to start this program, the gantry brings it to that CNC, and then you just move it from there on, then you can do that. Or if you want to go full IKEA automation, you could have it go from board on gantry to CNC to edge bander to drill tech to dowel tech to sort tech to... Um, store tech which then brings it to uh pack tech and basically packs it and you just built a furniture piece from ikea with only two or three people operating the whole factory mm. cool stuff costs a couple million dollars of course but so if you want what's to do it, you the do it. <laughs> what's the aspect of it that you need to move it you say like the gantry just moves it no, and no, no, but you said that I you have to, it. like, undo the cords in order to do something? So, basically, you see the you see how the gantry's in the middle. Yeah. Somehow, that has to get power. Mm -hmm. And the way it gets power is that there's an energy cable that you can't see because it's inside the gap. Because that, that's actually two, two beams in the middle. So, in the middle of those beams is a little rail that the energy chain runs on. And that energy chain basically allows it to go left and right because the energy chain can wrap in on itself to allow it to move right so as it goes all the way to the other end it then goes into a second energy chain and that energy chain allows it to go forward and back and basically what i have to do is i have to run every single one of those cables through the two energy chains because this thing does not ship with the cables connected to it they're all in a box Oh, so so when the gantry gets like changed locations, I thought what you were saying is that like when, you when it gets to it, a, a, if it's if it's got like a far enough quadrant, you have to unhook it and then rehook it on the oh, other no, side no, of no. the room. <laughs> no, the the energy chain allows it to move the entire length of it uh, without it right. No, the, but the way that you said it yep. first, it made it sound like oh. there was a, a plug in no. on on either side of the room and you have to like oh. once it gets halfway you have to plug it into the other one in order for it to reach oh yeah <laughs> no no i was i was literally talking about like first initial installation. yeah gotcha okay yeah and you have to do that multiple times a month i'm not multiple times a month i probably do a gantry like maybe every every six months okay but it, once it's hooked up you can leave it alone it does its thing 
Oh yeah. It gotcha. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. I was concerned. Oh, yeah. I was like, "What? What do you do? Do, you, do you, is there general maintenance that you have to do or something?" Or like, no, I, I do the full blown initial installation. Okay. First installation. I'm gonna actually send you one more picture. Okay. Um, I, I I didn't really look at this website hard. I just grabbed a picture from Google. This actually shows what the gantry is doing when it picks things up. Fair enough. Uh oh, interesting. Yep. It's like its own little scissor lift. Well, it, it's interesting that it it's got like this uh that that sort of like uh I can't think of the term, but scissor sort of um yep. contraption part of it. I think of like, it as a scissor lift. Yeah. But yeah, same thing. Yeah, suction cups hit the board, lift it up. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing your 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 story about your uh, your work. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you just maintain the electronics like you install you're like the engineer or do you actually like run the stuff or whatnot? So, are you forklift I, certified? <laughs> I'm not forklift certified, unfortunately. But no. that, honestly, that's usually that, like an entire different section of the workforce. That was the well, joke. I can be forklift certified. It's mm. just I would prefer the customer to lift the machine up and damage it, not me. Because <laughs> those things are heavy. So we we do not get forklift certified unless we have to, because there are some factories where obviously they're brand new, nothing's in it. And you've got a lot of heavy things, and you're going to be forklifting it around. And yeah. there may not be people that can run the forklift. And honestly, it may take you, like, days or even weeks longer if you're having somebody else doing all the forklifting. So, yeah. Some of our guys that do big projects, they get forklift certified. I don't do too many big projects. I assist in big projects. I mostly, I mostly work on edge banters, which are smaller machines. They can, they can fit from as small as an actual house garage to as big as a factory floor and by factory floor i mean like three cars length so, oh wow yeah. okay that's yeah. not very big i mean it's it's not like big big but i mean edge banders are just one piece of a gigantic factory oh fair enough and usually you're gonna have if you're in a big factory you could have like five or ten of them so but yeah you, you don't think need a bunch of people driving forklifts around no, it, it, it's like getting car insurance for, yeah. you know, like it, if you're not going to be driving around, you might as well like not get it for every single vehicle. Just like have individual people driving their individual yeah. cars. Well, I mean, even more so if you think about it, I mean, every single one of those people that have a forklift, you also have to think about the licensing for each one of them. And right. Insurance. I mean, that's so, yeah. the reason why I haven't gotten my license yet is because I go into work with my dad. So I just drive with him because mm -hmm. if I if I need to get my license, that's some extra money that we have to spend on insurance. Uh, and we're not sure what car we want to do. And there, there was a time that I did actually own a car. I never drove it when i did it was expensive <laughs> and it was just sitting outside i'm like this is so much money for something i'm not using oh yeah and i mean you think about it nowadays like six to seven dollars for a fucking, for a fucking gallon of gas these days depending on where you live oh yeah it's yeah uh it, it's it's uh whoa 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 what sorry there's an iOS 17 now? Is that why my Hearthstone won't work? <laughs> I had no I idea there was an know. iOS 17 now. I'm still on 16. I... I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just had to derail for that. No, that's I. That's what this podcast is about. Talking about stuff that we're I'm inferior. So do you want to go on? Do my Hearthstone. To tell, tell this story about the Hearthstone. Um, no. D d no. <laughs> look, look, look. I live in fucking LA, okay? There's traffic. Cars don't move. Sometimes I play a game of Hearthstone while I'm doing that. Do you do you play it online or do you do you like the solo mode? Oh no, no, I'm 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 playing the Battlegrounds. Oh my good. Uh, well, 
Battlegrounds. Uh, Look, I, Battlegrounds I is a middle area because it's technically an auto battler. So yeah, it's an auto battle. But here's the point. Here's the problem. I can't win any of the games because I can't actually focus on it. So I'm not doing that whole sell, 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 buy, sell, sell, sell. It's like I can't look at the phone. All I mean, like that so. that that's the reason why I can't play it on my phone is because it's so yeah. slow. I know that's. It, it's just I'm, impossible. That's the reason why I lose half my fucking Hearthstone. Now. I, I cannot play I any actually online games on Hearthstone. I can I can play online games. They're just I'm not the best on them. No, I mean, it's... I win sometimes. Like, mm. Sometimes the the problem is is that if you get disconnected just randomly, yeah. just any yeah. sort of fluctuation, you have to completely close the app. Because that's true. Even on PC, if it's like, oh, you lost internet connection, it's like, do you want to reconnect? I just don't even bother with that because when you click that, it just spins and spins and spins. And sometimes, sometimes it'll say no connection do you want to reconnect again but for the most part it'll just spin and spin and spin for the rest of time so i yeah. just automatically close it and relaunch it and sometimes i can even like get if if i'm on my phone i can get back in fast enough to like do my turn but usually mm -hmm. not yeah uh, I hate the Hearthstone app so much this is something that i don't mind ranting about but you you go you go it's such trash. No, I was just, I was agreeing with you. It, it's trash. I hate it. Because I, I, I like, I want to play Hearthstone, but I don't always want to, like, launch my computer because my computer too. gets hot, especially during the summer, and gets my room hot. So yeah. I, I, I want to play it on my phone. But first and foremost, if you're going to play, like, the solo player mode, you still need to have internet connection for some reason which is yeah. absolutely stupid and I hate it. And I get like auto save features or whatever, like connection to your, you know, account so that they remember all of your achievements and unlocks or whatever. But like, just let me play the solo modes offline. Like, why did I download this much of software for it to be connected to the internet? So what, what, it's been a while since I played any of the solo missions. On the solo missions, do they still time you out? N no, the, okay. the 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 That's thing at is least good. The, the solo missions, there is no timer on your turn, which is the main reason why I like them. So you can spend yeah. as long as time as you want on your turn, but if there is ever a flicker of like internet is not pristine hearthstone will be like oh hold on and it'll get fuzzy and it'll be like connecting and then sometimes it'll come back but if you tab out on your phone you're you're dead you're just absolutely yeah. dead you also can't let your your phone screen like nope. dim and lock because as soon as you like bring it back up it's like oh I need to reconnect. Spin, 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 spin. And I'm just like, yeah. why? I it, it, mm. just like even if it's instantaneously like better, less than a second, like a split second of it getting disconnected, it's like, nope. Yeah. You have to completely close the entire thing and relaunch it in order for it to work again. I'm like, why? So just why? <laughs> knowing that, what phone do you have? Uh, I have an Android. Do you not have this issue on your phone? Well, first off, there's a lot of Androids out there. You gotta, oh, a Kyocera Brigadier. That. There you go. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Um, uh, imagine so, the modern day Nokia. Gotcha. It is a brick. Um, it is a it's touch screen. It's not buttons, but like it is a brick. Uh, Thank we, you for having to point that out. We we use this on job sites and like they get dropped in the mud, they get dropped oh, on yeah. concrete and gravel, and you know a freaking backhoe will drive over it in the concrete mud. It's still somehow good. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and it's still good to go. I have never yep. scratched or damaged my phone. The the I'm only thing that has damaged my phone is that little tab that you have to pull out in order to plug in your phone that little thing yeah. eventually wore out and popped off so it's yeah. it's a separate thing and i have to manually you know hold on to it and then put it back when i'm done charging but 
otherwise like it basically just the little tail that like keeps it connected or whatever yeah yeah so i don't have the same problem you have simply because i play the game on my iphone and it's a 14 it's the iphone 14 pro max right so that's the only reason why i don't have the same problem because my phone is a little bit strong enough to reconnect pretty quickly and so i think a lot of it is is that the game is not just simply running in real time on their servers it's running in real time on their servers with every other person synced to it so when you become desynced it fucks everything up hmm. and that's why it's such a pain in the ass when you uh, when you uh, tab out and tab back in because it desyncs and it has to catch back up because not everything that you see is actually going on in real time some of it is pre-recorded so what i mean by that is when the battles themselves are determined before you even see who your opponent is the battle has already been mathed out it's already done all you're seeing oh you're is... talking about battlegrounds battlegrounds yeah yes okay so in I was so confused when yeah. you were talking about like a, a standard Hearthstone game. The math's yeah. already done. You're just a poser. I'm just like, what? <laughs> well, the, the thing is, battlegrounds, the way battlegrounds and orig and normal Hearthstone work is a little the same, simply because the timer system. The timer system is still there in a the normal game, and you're still synced directly with that. And if right. you go out, if you leave what you you're saying back, is when you see the, the Hearthstone resist. Battlegrounds auto battler, it's already mm -hmm. been done. It, it's yeah, like it's watching uh one of those freaking Las Vegas slot machines. Like once you pull the lever, it's already been, you know, figured out what you're gonna get. It's just going yep. to give you it's this little light show and spin these yep. things. Yep, and make you think you have a chance. Yeah. But yeah, so so because because that whole sync desync bullshit, the second you become out of sync with the system, it's got to do all sorts of calculations to catch you back up. And the older and slower your phone is, the more likely it's not going to be able to do that catch up. I've never played Battlegrounds on my phone. I've just not even bothered because yeah. I know that's connecting to multiple people. Oh, yeah, Battlegrounds would be would just not work on your phone. Because <laughs> on my phone, I can I can alt tab out get back in and as long as it was only like an alt tab of about five to six seconds sometimes 10 seconds it will actually it will actually reconnect me and basically what will happen is the timer will get to like we'll get to like uh 15 14 13 12 zero i was I, like what i i remember <laughs> it, it resyncs gotcha because when you left it it was still on 12 and then when you come back exactly. it's still on 12 i understand exactly. that i i was playing I, I, I've played against other people just in north, normal Hearthstone matches, mm -hmm. and someone messaged me on Discord, and then the thing would freeze. Like, oh, not God. even me trying to respond to it in, like, the, the drop-down menu, or me accidentally clicking on Discord, having it tab me out to Discord, and then quickly trying to come back. Just the fact of getting a message <laughs> on Discord would make the game go fuzzy freeze and then like try to reconnect and usually so what it does you're saying, but yeah so what you're saying is you're those guys that don't actually start doing anything until like turn three or four that i always beat no no i've i've <laughs> never done that those are usually the people that are like okay i'm gonna queue for a game and quickly go use the bathroom and then they instantly get a game while yep. they're on the toilet those are or, the people that you're going up against. Or they minimize the game and they bring it back up and it crashed and they have to reload it. And the time it takes for it to reload and reconnect them back to the game, literally two turns have passed by. The The worst part is when I go up against someone that's literally not there. And I'm like, why? Oh, yeah. Why? Like, like, I'll even like drag it out. And sometimes it goes on for 10 like minutes. Yeah. And it because it just takes me a long time to actually kill them. Um, yeah, and they just never came back. And I'm like, yep. Why? Why are you doing this? Like See, ten minutes, ten minutes. If you knew you were gonna be anywhere close to being ten minutes, away. and I understand people like yeah, something happens or whatever. Like you have to go know, grab exactly the child that's falling down the stairs or whatever. But like, no, I know goodness. what happened. <laughs> 
what happened is they were driving <coughs> their car and they hit a dead zone. <laughs> but if happens that happens, they, it usually says that you're, you're, uh, the person you're going up against is reconnecting or is disconnecting. They, there are pop-ups yeah. for that. But like, yeah. this is people that obviously have it open on their phone or their computer, yeah. and it's running, but there's nobody there. I don't understand yep. that. It's so like upsetting. The, it's like uh, your mom and your sister or something calls you over, and it's like, okay, hold on, and you walking over there, and you're mm. talking to them. Pause out what the they game. Wanted, and then... I can't pause it. It's online. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or like someone yells dinner, and it's like, get dinner. You go downstairs and you get it, dinner. In if there that happens, I just, I just forfeit. I just yeah. forfeit. Because yeah. you know, it's better than wasting this other person's time. Yeah. Do Do people not get that? Like, you I mean, whether you win or I lose, you still don't downstairs. get any points because you just weren't playing. You didn't play any cards. You aren't yeah. considered. You know. Sometimes you just forget your phone. I, I genuinely wondered if there was, like, for a time, you could get experience just for, like, queuing and losing. But I'm pretty sure you have to at least play a card or something. Oh, no, that's not why people would do that. So you're, you're, Well, there's, like, all sorts of AFK about. grinding that yeah. you can, like, do in lots of video games. I know for a while when I was playing Destiny 2... I just would launch in and try to do this, you know, raid or boss or whatever. And the people would just be AFK because apparently everyone had already beaten it at that point. And yeah. you can only play it with other people. But people were doing the AFK strat because apparently there's a random chance of you getting a lore piece if you just queue through it. Do you remember that? Oh, okay. I kind of, yeah. But and people I, were like rubber banding their controllers and like, here's yeah. a great idea, guys. So this is how you do the solo grind. Like it was a positive thing. People were doing this on yeah. purpose, and it was. Oh. So I was gonna say the 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 reason why people would AFK farm in Hearthstone. There's actually a really really good reason why. The reason why you would do it is because in Hearthstone, if you AFK farm, you go down in rank. And some people only enjoy uh, the game when they're going against people who are their rank, not people who are way, way higher than them and for whatever reason are at their rank. So gotcha. like when I'm playing Hearthstone Battleground, I try desperately not to win too much because once I hit about six, seven or 8,000 ELO, I stop winning because mm. all of these people have like 5,000 APM and they're like just moving their freaking hands so fast that they're like, gaining 500 to a thousand stats in like one turn and it's like i i sold five minions and bought three and you, you can only have fun if you're winning i understand well not necessarily i actually enjoy the game even when i'm losing because i consider i consider anything in the top four to be a win oh uh, yeah fair because enough. if you're in the top four you gained elo i want a win win obviously but I'm okay if I got second or third place. Well, usually, because like, the person that got in first got lucky or managed to get, like, their good build off pretty early. And well, then no, they you, can just, like, keep growing that. You, you know how they got first place and I didn't? They're on PC. That's why. I can't play the game as fast as them on my phone. Ah, I see. You're making excuses. <laughs> It's a good excuse. Because no, oh, because even though your phone is better than mine and runs perfectly, you, you can still have the excuse that you're not doing as good? No, it's just I watch professionals who make videos on YouTube about the different kind of metas that are going on in Hearthstone because it's fun. It's I fun just to see hate some metas in general. Well, I mean, when I say meta, I mean like if uh, you're going to go Murlocs, you this is probably what you should try to go for as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's 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 only a meta in the sense of these are the cards that are good and these are the cards that will probably help you win if you try if you get one of them or try to get one of them. So, I mean, there's there's not really a meta in Battlegrounds, but then there kind of is. I just hate when, like, something dominates a certain type of game or whatever. Yeah. That you're, like, At I understand that that randomized. just happens, and so you have to, you know tweak things or like augment things or make new seasons with like different yeah. you know 
settings or whatever and this is for any game so like yeah. in like Fortnite or apex legends you have like a season where you don't get certain weapons or you get a brand new weapon and so mm -hmm. it's 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 a constantly changing game because you you obviously can't just have like the same thing yeah uh, things get boring just, you have to mess yeah. things up so that they change but yeah i don't <sighs> You, you don't really see something like that. Well, you didn't used to see something like that in Pokemon. Because I'm talking about the card game. The, the video game, absolutely. Yeah. There's all sorts of like math and meta. But yeah. for the longest time, the card game was really just balanced. You could play whatever you wanted, however you wanted. It was the luck of the draw. You know, there was a little strategy... But basically, you got to build whatever you want, and it only mattered whether or not your deck countered or was countered by the other person's deck. Yeah. But I feel... with the new things now, with like GX and ZX yeah. and Break and, you know, you get this, the the freaking, the Dag Team Double Dash or whatever. It's just like, you, you can get the best cards instantaneously rather than having to evolve them which is like the whole yeah. point behind <sighs> they're taking the Yu-Gi-Oh route yeah it, it's literally pay to win at that point because you just like get the best card ever and then you just play all the legendaries and you win whereas yeah. well, in Hearthstone if you play with yeah. all legendaries you'll probably lose because you need yeah. yeah legendary cards are cool but they really don't do a whole lot by themselves yeah the point of a legendary card is it's a very high value card for its cost mm -hmm. but the problem is is that you still have to get to that cost and you still have to have things that that can yeah. combo with it Hearth, well Hearth there's also Stone like low cost is, cards but they also yeah. don't do much hearthstone's too combo combo forced i feel you have to combo in hearthstone to win you can't just pull something and it's just so good it's hard to hard to fend well, against. Well, I would I would I would slightly disagree because there are different kinds of combos. There's different builds. Like yeah. you can have a deck that's all about summoning big monsters from your deck without actually having to spend the cost. You know. Well, there's all sorts yes, of but, death rattles but... that you can do that it is like different from you actually playing them. So, yeah. Depending upon if you're doing beasts or dragons, there are different ways to get them on the field other than just, like, spending their mana. So these, yeah. you know, dragons are obviously stronger and will beat up beasts for the most part, but they're harder to play. You have to yeah. play them differently. And beasts are pretty quick, and there are a lot of them, and even if they die, there's still some that mm -hmm. stick around. You know, so yeah. it, it's like this battle of attrition thing. Whereas, you know, dragons usually try to stick around. Yep. And then, like, spells are obviously there to sort of put in this mediator, but you need to have some minions, otherwise your face will get bashed in if you're just using spells. So there's, yep, yep. there's a good balance for everything in Hearthstone, and there was a prime spot where there was just, like, a lot of, you know, very simple ways to build decks, and you could build you know different types of metas that like i wasn't there for like jade decks i thought that was horrendous i think oh, jade I decks are so stupid jade. you oh you're you're so toxic i hate you so much <laughs> oh i never did make a I never did make a good jade deck. i, 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 I never did a discard though. deck although those seemed pretty interesting but yeah. I, I never really liked Warlock because it was all about, like, dealing damage to yourself. It, like, it was always a trade-off. Um, yeah. Which I, I never understood because you, you could never really heal yourself. So mm -hmm. it was, like, this really rush to get out big, strong cards and be more offensive, which mm -hmm. I really think is what uh, Demon Hunter is now. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Warlock is almost more about dealing damage to yourself and then translating that into damage to your opponent while you can heal yourself. So mm -hmm. I feel like the meta of Warlock has changed, but how it technically works has stayed the same. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because uh, uh, Warrior used to always be about uh, using weapons and, like, attacking, uh, you know, and not always about how you summon minions or what type of minions you use or whatnot. I mean, for a while there was pirate meta, but, you mm-hmm. know, that's still an option, but is not, like, a big thing. Because you can have elementals, you can have mechs, you can have, you know undead now or whatever but raffle locks yeah all of the murlocs yeah i i love murlocs because murlocs mm-hmm. are fast they're quick they're they're versatile which is interesting because you mm-hmm. it seems like even for all the different you know areas of the world that uh, creatures are from like dragons are kind of from an area and like uh, mechs or something. The, Murlocs always seemed like their own thing that was still mm-hmm. from everywhere, if that makes yeah. sense. Because there's a lot of different Murlocs. Oh, I think yeah. Murlocs were really interesting. Yeah. I was actually expecting, like, orcs to become, like, a, like a race. But because beasts is so basic, <clears throat> I figured yeah. that it never really was going to happen. Yeah. Like freaking the silverback gorilla that was like a 1 4 taunt uh, mm-hmm. was like so big. And then when new metas came out, with uh, I think when mechs were introduced, people were like, you know, he's a 4 cost 1 4. Is he ever going to get buffed? And they're like, uh, well, he's got the beast tag. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, stuff does get left in the dust and does get left behind. But yeah. at the same time, that stuff is still there. It didn't get changed. There's just more options. Yeah. The the, the easier options go, drop to the bottom, and the better options end up going to the top. Yeah. Un- unfortunately, that's, there's that's so much the stuff is. now. Like, I, I don't like that there's too many new things now. Because there's freaking yeah. dredge and infuse and all this other nonsense that I'm like, it's too much at this point. Now that's power creep for you. When a game's been out for as long as Hearthstone or Pokemon or Magic the Gathering or anything, power creep just kind of starts to fuck it up a lot. Yeah. Especially Magic the Gathering. My God, that game... Has become so complicated now. I would love to see like even an odd decks come back. That would be such a cool thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, all they really have to do is like re release some sort of card that's like buffed when you only have you know even cards or odd cards mm-hmm. or even like uh, on- only class cards. I know that Paladin was all about yeah. like. If your if your deck has no neutral cards or whatever, do stuff yep. or whatever. But I never saw that in any other uh, class, and I thought that's something that they could absolutely yeah. work with. That again isn't a new you know effect or system with the cards or whatnot that affects you know too much stuff. It's literally just you know an effect of the card. Yeah, there there does need to be more. Um... There does need to be more cards that, in my opinion, will... uh, What's the best way to describe it? There needs to be more cards that... Less gimmicky. Like, if if you just made, like, new cards that had, like, an effect that wasn't... More gimmick. There needs to be more cards that that, that basically are a backbone for a type of gimmick. Like, the even cards and the odd cards. Those were something that that forced a gimmick and that's what kind of made them fun because it forced a gimmick but there were different types of ways you can work with that gimmick the quests were kind of a way of forcing a gimmick but there was very little variety in how okay you you, your definition of gimmick is different than mine see i when i think of gimmick i think of like corruption work yeah like what would you f- refer to as infuse corrupt or you know whatever that kind of card ability i suppose what would you call that cuz i would call that a gimmick oh, no. but i'd i'd call that a gimmick 
Um, okay. just like just like how if you have an ability, if you have a quest that ter- changes your hero power into a different hero power, that that new hero power is the gimmick, and you've built your deck around using that gimmick and getting that gimmick. That's what I kind of mean. Okay. Well, in in that essence, I think absolutely uh, making new gimmicks or you know creating new ways to build like as always you just need to keep Creating making new ways new stuff to build or whatever. Deck. Yeah. I they like just need to stop making that. new abilities cuz yes. I remember when you know Zilliax, right? Well, Zilliax has are, taunt yeah. divine shield uh yeah. the freaking what's the one? It's like soul forge or whatever like when it attacks it heals that much so, or whatever. Yeah. And magnetic. So, like that that like I respect Zilliax for being what it is. Like that's a cool thing. Like he's got a bunch of abilities or whatnot. Yeah. If he basically makes if they made another games. card like that, I would flip my lid. Yeah. Because at that point you're like you're throwing away creativity just for the fact of like look at all of these abilities. That's what yeah. I'm upset about. I would prefer gimmicks over you know just making a new ability. Yeah. So. I, I think Hearthstone does this. I'm pretty sure they do, but I'm not. I don't remember exactly. But I'm pretty sure what they do is they they have what are called um, forever gimmicks, and then they have block gimmicks. It's the same system that that uh, Magic the Gathering uses, which is basically you have your gimmicks that will always be there: taunt, rush, charge, that kind of stuff. And then you have the gimmicks that are only for that block, like Infuse. I don't see Infuse anymore. Um, another good one is, um, oh, which one was it? Uh, magnetic has gone away. Well, no, you st- you still get. Magnetic I mean, Magnetic sometimes. is still around, but it's not as yeah. big as it used to be. But that's fine. There, there's some though that are that were in a block that never come back. A perfect example is the Tradable. Tradable has not come back. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, was tradable ever really big? I knew it was a thing that was introduced and so it was it kind of gets used for that block. What was it big? I think they brought it back for a second block, but that was it. I mean, was it it, ever really a big part of a meta? No, not really. Well, kind of. The thing about tradable is that tradable lets you dig through your deck because you pick up the tradable and then you pay to get rid of it again and get another card. It's the so same thing with Dredge a little bit, but... Yeah, but the tr- the reason why Tradable was liked is because if you put a couple of Tradable cards in the deck, you've technically shrunk the size of your deck because those cards can just be tossed to the bottom of the deck. So it lets you quicker get to the main combo that lets your deck function. That's true, because there, there was some, like, OTKs that you had to, like destroy a bunch you, like you could put a bunch of spells in your deck that was one cost and then you play the yep. the legendary that destroys all those one cost spells so that yeah. you only have that one card that you need to win or yep. whatever i, I yeah. remember i never really enjoyed one true compost because i feel like it's a lot of work but it's not a lot of yeah. actual work you know what i mean like yeah, the the actual creativity and you know usefulness of it is very circumstantial and limited because yeah. if you just let want to try and wait 18 turns until you pr- press the win button i just I, I don't see how that's fun i'm yeah. sorry but i don't i remember I playing know. against people that would draw out their turn like they would rope every single turn and then play something last second i'm like mm-hmm. bro are you playing or not like th- this isn't a championship like <laughs> yeah this isn't yeah. chess like i i i hated watching hearthstone tournaments because they would rope every single round and then hero power and that's all that they did until they had like their combo in hand cuz they just never wanted to play anything i'm like yeah. is that fun no <laughs> It's I not. mean, that that's kind of the f- same thing that I have about, well, I guess this is true when you put any, you know, when you make anything an eSport. But, like, specifically Melee, Smash Bros, Brawl, and all that yep. nonsense, 
That's the reason why they added tripping into the game, because they did not want to make this family-friendly game about, like, just being crazy with items and random stages and whatnot to, in you know, random characters clashing together. They didn't want it to be sweat, you know, fox only no items, final destination, you know. Mm -hmm. It just... When it gets to a point that it's just like, this is the only thing that you can do, this is the only thing that works, if you play the game any other way than this, you are a failure and a loser, and you have no chance of winning, mm -hmm. I just don't even want to bother. Yeah, that does, re that does really... Because really I good. would love to play games that I you know haven't played forever but you know if you launch up valorant you just get instantly domed and you never learn how to play and you can't play and people are smurfing because they just want to click on heads because that mm -hmm. makes them feel good i guess i don't know yeah sorry i'm getting real real heated and we're off topic but that's sort of what this <laughs> podcast is all about yep what's that <clears throat> um, but we were talking about the, the gimmicks of Hearthstone. Yes. And I, I think it's good to have new stuff and incite people to make new decks and, like, play differently or whatnot. I just mm -hmm. think that it's a problem when, you know, you can forge every card. Or, actually, there's only specific cards that you can forge. I, yeah. I think Forge would be a cool thing that you could do, similar to, I guess, uh, Overload, where if you want to spend some mana this turn, then you can save on mana next turn, or whatever. Yeah. But it forges, like, spend two mana to make the card better, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know. I... There's a there's a lot of stuff that I disagree with and have ideas about how to make it better, but it, it's one of those things of, like, it is what it is, so how do we approach it at this point? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, if we just sort of <laughs> want to move on from this, uh, I was going to tell you about Legends of Runeterra real quick. Oh, yeah, go for it. Because uh, I really think you would like it, because the, the big thing about how it works is that uh -huh. uh, it's not like Hearthstone where you have the mana and you can do whatever you want on your turn, and then it's yeah. the next person's turn. It's, it's literally you play a card and then they play a card. And mm -hmm. the turn isn't really a turn. Uh, it, yeah, it just, I, I noticed that when I was watching you play. It, it, it's similar to Magic in a way that you can just sort of play your cards down, and then you, you have certain cards that you have in play, and then yeah. when it's, you know, the attack token is on your side, you can choose to put them into active attacking, and then mm -hmm. they get a turn to, you know, respond. And the interesting thing is that after every single instance of your opponent responding to what you've just done, you mm -hmm. get a rebuttal. So yeah. if if you place down a, a two attack, two health guy, then they can place down a two attack, two health guy. Yeah. And then you get a chance of like, do I want to play a spell? Do I want to play another guy? Do I want to put him into attack position? And then if you've gone into attack, then they have to block, but they could also play a spell. And depending upon uh, what kind of spell it is, because there's instantaneous spells that just go off. There's yeah. fast spells that you can play during, you know, attack or defense. Um, mm -hmm. But whenever you place down a fast or slow spell, um, and slow mm -hmm. spells cannot be played during combat, um, but when a spell gets placed down a fast or slow spell mm -hmm. then it goes to the next person's turn and they're like do you agree with this or you can place down a spell um, yeah. and you can place down a fast or a slow spell but if you place down a fast one then it goes in front of the slow one mm -hmm. otherwise it goes behind 
Uh, yeah, and then it, it swaps back to stack. you, and you can place another fast one to like yep. try and counteract what they did. It's a very interesting way of playing that I think oh, yeah. you would really like, especially if you use it's, like spells or whatnot. It's it's just like Magic the Gathering, but on crack cocaine. Yeah, it it's really fast paced, but also kind of chess like because you're like. Do I want to have this guy out yet when I know that he's yeah. going to have a bunch of fast spells that can just instantly kill him or whatnot? Well, it, it's very weird. It is. I think what throws me off so much on it is the fact that everyone's energy is restored every turn so that you have a full amount of energy for all of the rebuttals you may want to do. And the rebuttals aren't just instant sorcery like in Magic the Gathering where certain things can be any time and certain things can only be during your turn. Almost everything is basically on play during the rebuttals. Well, once you use a card, it's used. Yeah. But, yes. Like, say it's my turn, I play a card, your turn. or, yep. or Then you can respond, play a card. And then yep. turn swaps... Now it's your turn to go first, but now yeah. we've got one extra mana. To, yeah. so, so, like, in that way, similar to Hearthstone, it, it steadily grows uh, yeah. every turn, like, what, what mana you get. Yep. But the interesting thing is that you can, like, respond, which is, yeah. uh, is so interesting to me. And I, I like and dislike it at the same time because it's super annoying what can happen, especially yeah. when you feel like you've got a good play and then they just like throw something out that you cannot plan yeah. for or prepare for. And now that you've used all your mana, there's nothing you can do to respond now that they've yep. just done it or whatever. It's so yeah. weird and interesting. But it very It very much gives the defense a huge advantage. Exactly, it. A huge I I honestly find myself like not attacking as much, which is super annoying, because you have to play in a defense situation until they try to put everything out, then you can counter them, and then now that all their stuff is gone, then you can try attacking, but then mm -hmm. they can usually just like counter you back so it's yeah. it's this weird almost like chess like game where you're trying to position your stuff properly but also not yeah, it, reveal everything it very much it very much feels like it um it it, it, may, it lets you benefit from turtling and i don't oh, yeah. know how i feel about that the, there are some decks that do go fast though like you can get some stuff uh for free or for cheap um mm -hmm. Like, there's this good uh, system that I like where you can play cards by discarding them. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a way to, like, get a card out, and then you also play another card because, you know, you play the first card to discard the card that actually gets played. So you play two cards at yeah. once or whatever. Um, and then there's some other stuff like Last Breath, which is their version of Death Rattle. When the card dies, mm -hmm. something happens. Um, there, there's some other stuff about it that's not that different. Um, there's Vulnerable and Challenger, which is if you have a card with Challenger, when you put it into attack position, you can choose a card for it to attack. Uh, in Vulnerable, uh, you usually put onto an enemy... So a card with vulnerable can be put into a defensive position. Uh, like when you're attacking, uh, you can choose the enemy's card with vulnerable to put into. Uh, yeah. So like if if you've got a card that's uh, a two two, and they've got a card that's like a twelve, but it only has two health, you could put like vulnerable onto it put it into defending position of your guy that only has two attacks. Yep. Yeah. So there, so there's that essence of it, but I also really don't see that in play much. Like the biggest thing that I told you about is rally, which is super huh? annoying, which yeah. basically means that they have not... the attack turn. And then once they've attacked, they can just play a card that has rally. Then they get to attack again. 
Uh, and then if they still have mana, they can place another card that has Rally, and they can basically just, like, keep doing it. And, uh, it also <laughs> looks like they can also, like, respond to your attack by playing a Rally card, and then once you're done attacking, then they instantly attack, and then it's their turn to attack again. Yeah, so so it's not even their turn yet, so all the mana yeah. has been spent or whatnot, and they yep. automatically get to start an attack before their turn even starts. Yeah. And then their turn starts, and then they just instantly play their their cards into attack position rather than yep. playing stuff out. Yeah, because you don't have anything to respond with. So Rally is huge and completely yeah. broken, but I, I, yeah. I don't see it that much either. So Yeah. <sighs> I, I probably will try the game out. I really will. I, I, but, really, uh, I really want you to try it because I think you, you would enjoy it, and I'd actually like to, I think to play I would against too. you. I really do think I'd enjoy it. The, the biggest problem that I have with it is that it's hard for you to actually collect stuff. But uh, -huh. uh, the way that you 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 don't get card packs or anything. You mm -hmm. can get chess, and it gives you random cards from anything, and you really can't like choose what sort of stuff that you want to try. Like in Hearthstone, you can get specific card packs for a you know a, you can get uh, Saviors of Oldham card packs or whatever, and mm -hmm. then you know what kinds of cards you're getting in that one. In this game, yeah. you just kind of get random luck of the draw. But what I will say is that their buying and crafting is so much better than Hearthstone. Because Hearthstone has dust, and that works for the most part. But, oh my goodness, Runeterra has this thing where you literally get just, uh, you get card tokens. And then yeah. you, you have like legendary card tokens, rare to card tokens, uncommon, and common. And you can literally just pick and choose. Uh, I want this card. Buy it. Yeah. Oh, but it's so <laughs> great. So you can literally like fun. make up a deck of cards that you don't have, and then just like go through and buy, 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 buy. Ooh. Oh my goodness, it's that so really nice. nice. I I do need I need I need to play the game. I'm I need to download it. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll probably download it after Hearthstone actually because. Okay. Out of that. We're, yeah. we're at an hour now, so we'll probably call it uh, pretty soon. But the one final thing that I wanted to complain about real oh. quick uh, yeah, is it. is their heroes and how their hero system works. And uh, oh my goodness, I hate it so much. Because most really? of you, you have to play a hero. Yeah. Because most heroes don't do anything in your hand. You have to okay. play them. And they they have a second mode. All of them have a second mode where they get a little bit stronger and have, like, an actual passive effect or whatever. Uh, uh -huh. But they have to be in play for whatever that trigger is. And for most of them, it's, it's pretty simple. Like, I attack twice or I, mm -hmm. you know, hit... Uh, I reduce an enemy's health or I see, you know, uh, allies die. And that's uh -huh. the hardest one, because, like, you have to put it in play, but then you have to make... You also have to put other cards into play and have them mm -hmm. die, which is easier said than mm -hmm. done, because usually once you've placed a hero, your opponent just instantly just destroys them with, like, a spell or something. Yeah. So it's so hard to use heroes, and it's... They they barely are out, and even when you, know you do get them leveled up, they're not that great either. <laughs> yeah. I just don't understand. You know what that reminds me of? <coughs> it reminds me of Planeswalkers in Magic the Gathering. Um, I don't know much about Magic, so you'll have to oh, explain that to me. The, the way that Magic the Gathering works is you have creatures, you have spells, you have things like enchantments that are always out. Mm -hmm. But one of the card types you have is a planeswalker and planeswalkers are like the heroes of the game so when you get a planeswalker out it's not necessarily a creature it's considered a player and it has different abilities on it and it has an actual loyalty loyalty system where basically it comes out with a certain amount of loyalty counters you add you have an ability that adds counters an ability that's usually pretty cost neutral 
or only cost one of one loyalty counter and then usually have a super ability that costs like seven eight ten loyalty counters the planeswalker comes out it has some loyalty counters on it you use the plus one ability usually and it gains a loyalty counter and you get an effect and then your turn's over then it's the opponent's turn and the opponent instantly tries to kill your planeswalker because they want to get rid of it because <laughs> yeah. his effect usually if he uses all of his counters is usually really fucking good can end games sometimes so almost always when a planeswalker comes out it is almost always killed immediately by the enemy and since it counts as a player when the enemy decides to attack you they don't attack you they attack the planeswalker and right you don't it's defend, got its own health you're not yeah and you're not defending yourself you're defending the planeswalker if you choose to so it's kind of its own little target that it can be targeted because normally when you attack, you don't choose who you defend. The opponent chooses who he's going to defend with. But since the Planeswalker is a player, you can attack it directly. Right. So they die very quickly, and they die very easily. And it's mm. very hard to keep a Planeswalker. <laughs> now, imagine that, but their abilities weren't that useful. Well, usually the Planeswalkers don't have very useful abilities at first. Their plus one ability is usually simple. Maybe the Planeswalker cost four, four energy to bring out. And its abilities may be something that like a two or three energy card would have been worth. So they're not they're not the best, but they're okay. Usually it's the other abilities that are like, holy shit, if I can just keep him out for two or three turns and I get this bolt, this OP ability. So it's just like with the heroes and the fact you gotta level them up for them to be really fucking strong. Right. Yeah. Now imagine that, but imagine their abilities aren't useful. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that's hardly at all. Like usually, they only buff the hero card, and yeah. even that really isn't by much. That sucks. Yeah, I I don't understand, especially because They'll heroes are crucial. Heroes. Yeah, I hate that heroes are crucial because that's like what the whole deck is built around. It's like mm -hmm. trying to use the heroes. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Just ignore the hero. Like, imagine trying to do a freaking... Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, a good example. Like, mm -hmm. a, a an even or odd deck, but yeah. you don't get the benefit of even an odd deck until you place a legendary minion on the field. And then that. it's like, all of your yeah. discover spells are split in yeah. twain. All of your hard work pays off. Wait, he killed him. Yep, exactly. Oh my goodness, I hate it so much. It's so <laughs> annoying. That's that's oh, that was the bad. one final thing that I wanted to complain about. But yeah. That sounds annoying as hell. Mm -hmm. Well, we can call it here unless uh I'm anything. dead tired. Yeah, same. I gotta go to work. Really I, I'm hard. busting for a piss as well. Yeah. Well, that thank you for out. coming out. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Looking uh Very much looking forward to the next one. Oh, okay. Thank you. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very sort of low, uh, low, I, I was going to say low energy, but we, we got pretty <laughs> excited yeah. about some of the things, but very low maintenance. Like this really isn't yeah. something that we have to do a lot of prep work for and a whole lot of actual work. We just, you know, hold yeah, a conversation, yeah. complain about some stuff, call it a day. Yup. Okay.